السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Welcome everyone to IE342 uh, Quality Control And today inshallah we will start our lecture with chapter 1 We have covered in the last lecture about the dimensions of quality The 8 dimensions of quality And we have talked about the, the, the fact quality the definition is not a specific one definition There are multiple definitions and the reason for that is, uh, one of the reasons is, as you can see, the quality is relying on um, different dimensions or different uh, aspects that it cannot be limited to only one definition because it's very broad. It is a uh, specialty by itself. It is very specific. Uh, I mean, they, it has a specific um, uh, methods uh, underneath the broad umbrella of quality. Um, quality can go from planning to executing to measuring to controlling. So each one of those uh, need a definition itself. So we have covered in the, uh, in the previous lecture the explanation of those eight dimensions. And today we will start with some of the quality definitions. Um, and as we say, there are plenty more and all of them are fitting to the quality um, uh, definition. Uh, a famous quality definition is, as you can see it here in the slide, is the fitness for use. Fitness for use is that when you are designing a product or a service that fits the need for the user. Uh, so if you are designing a car, so the car features and the car functions and the car uh, mechanisms or system is fitting the user needs. If you are designing a service like uh, a bank uh, services, like transactions, uh, or even education service, we, you have to design it in a way that fits the user's needs or the stakeholders. The stakeholder is very broad definition uh, compared to users, because users are only the direct um, uh, end of the product, uh, who's using the product or the service. The stakeholders are the direct and indirect uh, people or person who's benefiting also from the service. For example, just to give the things clear, um, stakeholders for the education now, the classroom here we have, is you as a student, you are the user, the main or the direct user or the direct stakeholders. But also there are indirect stakeholders, or we can call them indirect uh, users, indirect customers in, in the business uh, or the quality business concept, who are the job market, uh, the education industry itself, uh, your parents, um, your job that you are going to work at the end or the company you are going to work, those are also stakeholders. Uh, the employer, the one who's hosting your training or field training, also they are stakeholders. And you as a student, definitely you are a stakeholder, but you are the direct uh, consumer or customers of this education uh, service. Uh, so fitness for use is one of the definition for quality. And there is a modern definition of quality called the inversely proportional to variability. What does that mean? Uh, let's take it piece by piece. The definition, we start with the end or the last part, which is variability. Variability means you are not consistent in delivering the service or in uh, producing the product, okay? Imagine that I'm producing cell phones, uh, company X, okay? Uh, my phone sometimes is working, sometimes is not. Um, the speaker sometimes is loud and sometimes is too low, even when you adjust the voice, the battery, or even the dimensions of the phone, they are not really specific uh, or consistent. This is variability. You are producing the same phone. It could be the same dimensions, but sometimes the features between one to others, it, it varies. 
the reliability, for example, we have talked about reliability and durability in last class. Uh, so the reliability in my product, it varies or it is not consistent between my products. Some of my products are failing uh, before my, uh, for, uh, for example, that um, uh, the, the warranty stated, for example, engine failures in the car, it's coming too soon. Uh, comparing to other cars from the same manufacturer where it's last uh, longer, uh, we are not talking about the usage here, how is the user is, is dealing with the car, but we are talking with the same exact situation or the, um, uh, the same, for example, user, he's using two products from the same manufacturer, but the variability is not, or against, or the versus of the consistency. So you are not consistent in delivering the product, uh, in delivering the service or producing the product. So the quality definition here is the opposite, is having or producing or delivering services that against the variability, which means you are producing product and delivering service constant, constantly meeting the customer's requirement or meeting the users. Constantly meeting the customer requirements or customer's needs. And um, those needs has to be also specific. You, you cannot change the customer needs every time and then you are expecting to have the same consistency in the product or the service. It has to be deter determined early and clarified in the designing phase so when you do the mass production for the product or uh, delivering the service, it has to be consistent with the specifications or the requirements being set earlier. Uh, there is a definition also for quality improvement. And what is the difference between quality and quality improvement? Quality is, is the baseline when you start the uh, production or you start the service. The quality improvement is the continuous practice that in the business of production or service you have to conduct. The definition of quality improvement, it can be, and is not limited to this definition, is the reduction of variability in processes and products. If you compare it here to the quality definition, it is a steady state steady state or a base state when you have to be uh, against the variability but here it's a continuous the reduction it is a continuous practice it has to be continuing to reduce the variability in the process and the product and that can be done by eliminating waste and one of the things definitely there are many and we will see that inshallah later when we talk about lean concept the elimination of waste in the concept of quality it can vary from the the motion waste what does we mean what do we mean by motion if you are in a production line and uh, staff they are moving or they are carrying products or they are uh, transferring products, uh, they have to do transportation inside the facility. This motion, if it can be reduced, then this is a waste. They are not needed if those motion can be reduced, whether using automation or uh, designing the facility in a way that reduce this uh, motion or transportation. Time also, it is one of the waste factor which can reduce also the variability because if you imagine a restaurant, uh, when you have a drive-through, especially when the drive-through or carrying away orders, when you ask for to go, uh, if the service or um, uh, the cooking uh, transaction, when you place the order until the food is ready, if it's not designed in a way that every step or every action, it has a timeline 
when it has to be completed to move to the next one, uh, then the variability for completing the order on time, it could be varying, especially when there is a large number of customers, then it uh, will be varying the, not only it could be the quality of the food, but also uh, the queue time, which also considered to be a quality level or a quality factor for the customers. Customers, when they go and order food, they're expecting to almost not wait and have their food uh, cooked and ready in the way they are preferred. So that's why it's a challenge for uh, food services provider, restaurants and so on, to have or balance between those two things. Uh, hiring too many people, it could be a cost for the restaurant that is uh, also a waste. Uh, having few people, also it could be a risk when there are too many customers. So to balance between those and reduce the waste in terms of motions, in terms of time, to have the process optimized and the word optimized, I think you are in a level in industrial engineering, you know what is optimized mean, which means the perfectness or uh, having everything uh, in the process done uh, in the perfect manner or in the optimal situation. Moving with the terminologies that needed uh, to be understood during this course and during the quality journey in general. Um, the quality characteristics or the quality specifications that we have talked about usually or uh, most of time it is based on as we say the stakeholders or the consumers point of view and we refer to those quality characteristics to critical to quality, CTQ, critical to quality, which means those specifications needed in the product or the service from the point of view of the consumer and the stakeholders. Uh, those critical to qualities or quality characteristics can be categorized in three types, physical, sensory, which means a mahsusa, physical, uh, uh, the physical is um, يعني, more of um, um, uh, physiaia, we can call it uh, uh, in the mechanism of the product or the service. Time orientation, uh, which is uh, time-based uh, activities. We will give explanation or examples for each one. In the, uh, and I always use TARS examples because it is common and you are in the age, most of you are using this product or consuming, buying or servicing, maintaining uh, cars. So it will be something that uh, easier to understand. When we uh, take example about cars, when we apply those three uh, types, the physical definitely uh, the size of the car, um, and uh, how it is weight because the weight it is a factor in, in, in the fuel consumption. If it is heavy, then it will consume uh, more fuel. Um, the, uh, the size, as we said, depend on your usage or need. If you have a family or you are um, needed a small car for more convenience, uh, the sensory, is uh, the color, uh, the design, how it looks like in terms of the shape. We are not talking here about the size. We are talking about the shape, the curve, the smoothness, the, the, um, uh, the sporty maybe look or the classic look, depend on your uh, need or your taste. Uh, the time orientation, definitely this is one of the obvious uh, characteristics or critical to quality which means here in the car example like the speed, uh, the reliability, the durability which we talked about them in the last time, the serviceability. So all these it apply to the car example and then from here you can apply to other products and other services as well. Um, the, uh, the variability factor which is really uh, uh, 
an important uh, subject. We have to understand it when we learn about quality. Variability uh, always caused, um, most of the time, let's say, and be specific, most of the time caused when the human factor appear. Humans, even if they are trained uh, or well-trained, because of the, the variability in the human nature, we are not the same, we are not alike. Even twins who come from the same or come the same time together, the same moment, they are not the same in terms of the behavior, in terms of the habits. Uh, they could have some common, but they are not identical. Even if they are identical in the shape or the appearance, but they are not identical in the other factors. And from here, when the human appear in the industry, whether in a production or a service industry, variability appears. It can be reduced, it can be maintained or controlled, but it cannot be, uh, let's say, eliminated in a way that it become not exist. That's why in the next revolution of industry, when you see how is the trend is going in the industry, is going for automation using artificial intelligence, machine learning. And the reason for that is the variability in the machines, it is way less compared to human. Human, there is a subject uh, or there is a factor that may affect their performance, which is their emotions. Even myself, I'm an instructor. If I'm teaching this lesson again after one or two hours, and I have the same class and I have the same subject, I may not be able to have or deliver the same material identically to the first one. I will have slight differences, and these differences cause variability in the service. In a certain level, it could be acceptable to the consumer, but imagine if I'm giving here a different um, slides compared to the other sessions or to the other section, what my students will expect or what I'm going to expect from my students, they will say, okay, this instructor is not delivering consistent topic or consistent material. He is giving the other section things we uh, he didn't cover it here in our class. And so on. Imagine that in the restaurant, imagine that in any other place where his service is provided. Also, it applied to the production because when you are using the human uh, on, on, on the production line heavily, you are going to expect the same uh, variability. That's why even in the car production, in the big well-known uh, well names for car industry makers, uh, German cars or Japanese or uh, American uh, cars, they're using automations in their industry. Uh, Amazon, if you have looked online and searched in the videos and how is the automation now is inventing or invading the, the, the inventory of those huge or humongous uh, stores of Amazon. Um, those robots, actually, they are taking the orders from you when you place the order on the phone or online. And they are moving in the uh, facility to pull your product among a huge number of rows and, uh, and other products and put it in the right track to shipping to your door. So what was the old uh, technique or old application before the robots being applied to their store? Actually, it was human. And humans could do mistakes. Human could pull the wrong product or put it in the wrong conveyor or put the wrong label and so on. They could be in that day under pressure, they came late, they didn't have enough sleep, they didn't have breakfast, they did mistakes. We do mistakes 
we are human. So that variability concept, when you start a businesses like those mega businesses, it cannot be acceptable because 1% of mistakes when you have thousands of orders mean you will have hundreds of customers are not satisfied with your services or your production. That's why to measure this variability, we need a tool, we need a methods to measure this variability. And here is the statistical methods appear. Statistical methods, as an industrial engineer, you started this journey about statistical methods, starting from STAT 301, the probability and statistics, then the course design of experiment, IE 242, and also in this course, you will continue with the statistical methods because they play a role in the quality improvement. How they play that role? Because there is a famous statement. I would like to have all my students memorize this statement because I have been memorizing these statements from even my instructors uh, 15 years ago. If you can measure it, you cannot control it. If you cannot control it, you cannot improve it. So the measure or the measuring is the first step. And statistics or statistical methods all about measuring. In measuring data, we have two types of data. And I think you're all familiar with those two types, which is the attributes and the variables. The attribute data are the data that is discrete. Uh, sorry, I mean, uh, yes, it is discrete and it is based on counting. For example, how many students attended the class today? This is a discrete data. How it helps me to control the class uh, service or the, the, the education service? I can control the attendance by having the number or counts attended the class because the absent or the number of students who are absent, it give me uh, uh, an analysis about the attendance in general in industrial engineering classes or in paper in general classes. Then how can I improve it? Okay. There is some, it has to be applying some rules for attendance. For example, uh, it could be coming from different aspects or different ways. I could have bonuses, practices for the students who attended. So students, they will be motivated to attending the class. Or also it could be in a way that taking attendance and then absent students, they will be, um, 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 be and be, they will not be able to take exams if they exceeded the 25 percent of absence so here statistical methods starting from measuring then controlling then improving um so the attribute data are the discrete data that uh, based on the number counts how many people are in the queue but if i'm i'm talking about how much time or how is the average time for waiting in the queue in, in Banda supermarket or Bindaud supermarket, this is a variable data, which is a continuous measurement because it cannot be integer all the time. It could be three minutes and a half. It could be four minutes average time waiting in the queue, or it could be 15 minutes. It could be hours, depends on the service, depends on the resources you have also depend on the consumers, the number of people. Uh, if you compare a back queuing time to, to for example, um, subway, uh, the average time is different. So this is how uh, statistical methods, when you start measuring, you can, uh, you can control the process that you are applying or you, you are planning to, to, uh, to control and then from the controlling phase, you can move to the improve, uh, and that cycle keeps going and going and going. When you improve, you start again to measure, to control, 
and improve or improve then control and it goes vice versa but they all three elements needed uh, to apply quality in service or uh, production moving with the terminologies that we are covering uh, that is important for students and uh, learners to understand about quality specifications specifications it is the easiest translation for that is most of uh, you have specifications for the product you are planning to purchase with a phone with their a printer, whether a computer, whether a car, whether whatever, or even a food. You have specifications. You are expecting the spicy level in the food not exceeding a certain point. Uh, the temperature of the coffee is hot, but is in a certain level, it's acceptable. And if it's exceed or below, then it is not. So in the specification, usually we have upper and lower. Um, upper for the upper specification limits we call, and the lower is the lower specifications and the target, which is the exact uh, uh, value you are targeting. For example, um, the upper specification limits for uh, absence is 25% of the class uh, attendance in general for the semester. Uh, the lower is zero because it could be you have zero absence and the target also it could be zero. So the target and the lower it could be at the same and the upper it can be the 25%. You can convert it to number uh, or counts um, if you have the number of uh, class meetings during the semester. So in general, we could say uh, the upper uh, specification limits for absence is seven absence and the lower and the target are zero. Sometimes, and or, or actually in most of the time, the lower is below the target. So the target, let's say it is two, the lower it is zero and so on, depending on the production, uh, if it's product or service and depend on the uh, target uh, you are uh, planning, then you can draw the upper and lower. And you have to involve definitely all stakeholders when you design the upper and lower specification limits as well as the targets. Defective or non-confirming product, defect or non-confirmity. Be careful with the difference here and pay attention to this difference between non-conforming and non-conformity. Not all non-conformity mean is not conforming. And what we mean by non-conforming, non-conformity, um, basically when you purchase, let's say a phone and is not working at all, that is non-conforming product. But if you purchased a phone but the brightness of the screen or the light is not as bright as you are expecting or there is a little small scratch on the back of the phone. This could be a defect, but not meaning that it is non-conforming or defective because the product still working and all the features are working. Again, defect or defective has to be also identified from the stakeholder's point of view. You cannot, as a, just a producer, assuming that having um, uh, less chicken in the meal as a defect where customers think that it is defective and they cannot accept it. I'm just giving an example here from my, يعني, uh, my mind. But defect and defective they are different defective that's mean is not acceptable and defect are mistakes happen or um, defects happens in the product or the service but still in general it can be accepted uh, or fixed then accepted okay um 
more of the other terminologies. We have the statistical process control, and this is basically the chapter where the control charts are going to appear, and we will cover it later on in this course. Design of experiment is one of the term terminologies that in the quality, and this is covered in another class where you are targeting the process optimization uh, or the factors that uh, improving the process performance or optimizing the process performance. Acceptance sampling, how should I take samples in the production line or the service to measure the quality level? Uh, when you make calls to some companies, it says this call is being monitored for quality purposes. Okay, but not all quality, or not all calls monitored or recorded, that mean all here by the company. Sample of those calls are taken maybe in a daily or weekly or monthly basis to measure the quality level provided to the customers. And the number of samples is here under this one, acceptance sampling. There are methods to determine how many samples should I take to measure the quality based on the service or the product. Before we move on to Walter Sheward, uh, one of the major or uh, famous scientists in the quality, I would like to give now a couple of five minutes. If there are questions about the previous part, if you have it, please take the mic or write it in the chat box so we can discuss it here before we move forward. We will give five minutes to discussion if there is any questions. Uh, there is a question says, is variability the same as inconsistency? Yes, if you are uh, having a variability, that means you don't have consistency. You don't. Consistency, thabat. Thabat fil ada, thabat fil intajia. Variability, mutagayir. Uh, inconsistency, ma'naha? Adam Thabat. Okay. Any more questions? How to determine customers' requirements? Okay, this is we will cover it inshallah later in the class because it has uh, methods and inshallah partially it will be covered in the six sigma chapter when we do uh, the define or the demake uh, six sigma. Uh, If you cannot, okay, someone is asking to repeat the statements uh, about the quality measurements and control. If you cannot measure it, you cannot control it. If you cannot control it, then you cannot improve it. So measure help you to control and the control help you to improve. Okay, any further questions? Can we reach 100% quality? If you have three students, uh, okay, this is really good question. And I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. We, will, we were going to cover it anyway in the future. But since it's been asked, I will answer it. Um, Achieving a high 100% uh, quality or uh, satisfaction, um, this is, it could be um, manipulated. Yani I could show you that I have 100% quality or 100% satisfaction, but you have to define to me how did you measure it and how many people did they benefit from your service or your product? Because, because when I'm teaching 100 students, I never had 100% satisfaction. I could have 80, I could have 70, even though I'm teaching with the same uh, exact way. And those who put 100% for, I mean, those students who put 100% satisfaction, 
they would not see any room for improvement and everything was perfect. Whereas the other part of the other students, they see no, they were not satisfied uh, from the course. If you apply this to yourself uh, and the things that you are using with their products or consuming as a services, you will see how it is different from a person to another. If we put uh, a car dealer name, let's say I'm, I'm just here not marketing, I'm giving a name, just Majdoui, Abdelatif Jamil, whoever, I will see debates. Some people, they will say, okay, those are the best companies uh, in terms of the uh, uh, car dealers. Some, they will have some problems with them and they will not maybe consider them 100% uh, quality. Uh, car dealer or uh, authorized dealers. So you have to define to me when you say 100% uh, who uh, is uh, benefiting from your service or product, how many of them, and how you are measuring their satisfaction. Okay, but uh, it can be there is no impossible, but as you increase the number of users, as the risk, it will be to keep this 100%. I could teach one student and I achieve 100%, but when I teach 1,000 students, it will be challenging for me to have 100% satisfaction. So when you apply it to other uh, application, you will get the picture, how is it? Okay, any more questions before we move on? Um, okay, yes, um, how does the conflict between quality factors affect quality? Uh, the conflict between quality factors affect them. What do you mean by the quality factors? They have conflict first. And what are the quality factors? Uthman, he has a question. If you want to take the mic and clarify your point, um, because the question here says, how does conflict between quality factors. What are the quality factors and what is the conflict between them? So we can answer this question. Uthman, are you using the mic? <laughs> and I hope there is no issue with the voice again. Can you hear me, Doctor? Are you using the mic? Uh, can someone hear Uthman? Can you type it, please? Yes, can you hear Uthman? Okay. I think then let me just uh, just uh, Can you hear me? Man, uh... Okay, I cannot hear Uthman, sorry. Uh, there is, uh, it seems to be. Can you try again, please? Can you hear me, Doctor? Okay, no. Seems there is issue. Um, but now it is recorded, so we cannot move on. 
Uh, Uthman, if you please uh, maybe clarify the point here in the chat box or the text box here, and I will, inshallah, reply to you. Uh, we will continue now, and we will see. Because the last class was working, I don't know what is the issue here uh, with the settings of the... Okay. Uh, Walter Sheward, let's continue, and we will go back to that question. Um, Walter Sheward is one of the scientists in the quality that who developed the control charts that you see it in the slide here. Control charts are one of the famous tools or statistical tools that's been used to um, monitor or control the process uh, level or the quality level in the services or the production. As you can see in the control charts, there is the upper control level, which is the UCL, that's drawn in the top of the chart here in the figure, and the lower control level, which is LCL, and the center line, sometimes they call it upper control line or upper control level, center line or center level, lower control line or lower control level, both this, the same meaning. Um, those control charts very famous and we will cover them inshallah in two separate chapters in the future. Um, what you need to know at this level of this chapter, who developed the control charts? Um, the aspects of quality or management, uh, or managing the aspects of quality uh, improvement, it is basically relying or relying on three things. The planning, quality assurance, quality control, and improvement. They could be in different names, appear in other books, but they all referring to the same concept, which is strategy, which is the planning, maintaining problems or fixing problems, which is the assurance, measuring and improving, which is the control and improvement. When we do the planning, here is the phase where you measure or you collect the customer requirements. There are tools, but here we are not talking about the tools. We are talking about the phase in the quality that it has to be coming from the beginning before you start designing your product or your service. You have to measure or collect the customer requirements or the customer needs. And we call that the voice of the customers, VOC. Sometimes the abbreviations used the VOC, voice of the customers. The organization, when you want to start your uh, business or even if you are designing your capstone project, the first advice to you is before you start designing the model, hear from the consumers who are going to benefit from your product at the end or your capstone project at the end, whether uh, um, outsider users, internal users, those we call them stakeholders. In the, quality con uh, in the quality field, the customers are not the only people who's purchasing your product. Customers could be external or internal. External, it could be the one who's really purchasing your product. Internal, it could be in the company or uh, in, in indirect customers who are uh, considered to be stakeholders. So stakeholders are more generic name that con including the customers, whether they are internally or externally. You have to uh, design based on the needs of the quality, uh, based on the, the customer needs before you proceed with the implementation or 
uh, producing that in a mass production level. In the quality assurance, the quality assurance is the activity where you have to make sure that when problems comes, you have a system can fix it and put it back on the track again, as well as to maintain it to the customer. In, in, uh, in uh, put uh, an example for the quality planning and quality assurance, then also we apply it to the control and improvement to give things clearer to you. Uh, what makes Japanese cars succeeding in the Gulf market compared to others, and they are uh, selling more, they are knowing by using the methods that measure the customer's needs in this area or this region and design based on their needs. They design based on the environment here, the weather here, the uh, geographic region we have it, how is our roads looks like, um, how the people, uh, uh, traditional and habits in, in transportation. So they do in the quality planning, come and test the environment here before they design uh, their, uh, or they apply their final design for the car. For the quality assurance, they have a, a rigid system for maintaining their cars and apply that relig rigorously on, on, on the car authorized dealers, uh, as well as uh, having a durable and reliable materials that can work and be maintained for a long time. The last part in managing the quality, which is the quality control and improvement, is the set of activities that use to ensure the product and service meet the requirements after you produce it. Because when you design it you in the plan phase, you have measured the customer requirement. But when you apply the service or produce the products and the customers use them uh, or experience those services, they could not be satisfied. So the quality control and improvement to make sure that you are meeting the requirements and do whatever it takes to improve the product or the service to meet the requirements. One of the things that it could be done, and the same example we have used about the Japanese car, for example, or any other car that's succeeding in our market, they should have done the same steps. But when uh, we talk about quality control and improvement is the recall. Recall is the things that done when there is something that it could be um, harming or risking the safety of the users. So they recall and fix the things to meet the customer requirement because definitely the safety is one of the requirement. Uh, also in updating the models without changing the shape, they do, for example, changing the shape every five years or the design every five years. Within these five years, they do updating the features, the uh, some of the minor modifications based on the customer's feedback. Um, also, it could not be just only in the product, it could be in the service. Customer's feedback, they are expecting to have their cars fixed and maintained in a short time. They are expecting to have a 24-hour service centers where they can drop their car at any time, um, and so on. So uh, this uh, quality control and improvement step, it is ongoing uh, step to guarantee that you are meeting the quality, uh, you, you are meeting the expectation or the requirements of the customers and continuously improving your product or service. And here, where is the design, uh, sorry, the statistical 
uh, process control, like quality control charts are used, uh, the recorded uh, calls from the company used, and so on. The surveys to do after the class time, when the class end also, this is one of the same things for quality control and improvement. We will continue with the quality scientist that is uh, very famous, uh, who are uh, playing role in, in developing the quality philosophies and methods and application. We have talked about Sheward and now it's about Deming. Edward Deming is a well-known name in US and Japan who are invented many methods in quality and most of them are being used until today since he started um, as you can see he was um, working in US uh, during the World War II that's mean decades from now. Uh, Deming known for many methods in quality and philosophies actually uh, he's considered to be one of the pillars in quality. And I'm expecting from you to, to read the parts that we are going to cover in this slide. Um, there is nothing to be um, um, ex explained in terms of the methods. I will explain in general what his methods about. But uh, the point, the specific points, it is very easy to understand because it is clearly, uh, I. Um, define itself. Um, when Deming um, asked about uh, from the um, Japanese United uh, Scientists and Engineers, and by the way, those union for Japanese and scientists, they been established by those quality gurus, they call them, who are uh, asatir or legends for of quality. Uh, one of them is um, Edward Deming. Uh, their website, is here in the chat box. You can visit it and you can see that uh, Deming has a prize on the on the page. When you look to the right of the page, uh, there is Deming Prize that is annually done in Japan uh, to award those sectors who are maintaining the quality. That's why Japan was well known for quality in their products and services because they applied the quality from those scientists and others uh, in their schools until their industry. And all of us, maybe you have seen those um, program shows that demonstrate how Japan uh, considered to be um, a different uh, in terms of how they look to the quality compared to other countries. They consider it is a factor to, uh, or uh, it is something that is not uh, a preference. It is uh, uh, obligatory to have it from the beginning when you are planning for designing a product or a service. It's not something that you apply it later when you expand your uh, production or service. Um, uh, Deming stressed on continual never ending improvement. That's mean it is ongoing improvement and never stop. Uh, that's why uh, you see in the Japanese uh, industry, it is never been uh, stopped in terms of the level when they achieve quality, even the quality of life. When you live there in Japan, the, the the way how they look to the quality, it is in all the aspects of life, in your daily life, in your uh, all the product, all the services that you are daily used. Uh, he passed away Deming on 1993. He has a 14 points called Deming 14 points. And those are the things that I will not maybe explain in details because they are very uh, easy to understand and can be covered by the students in independent learning. Uh, but I can go on some of them. Um, Deming 14 points says that uh, consistency uh, or creating the consistency of purpose toward improvement. That's mean um, he's stressing on the consistency, how it is 
improving the process um improve um continuous improve and never stop improving training he was emphasizing on the training you have to train your employee uh, one of the things that i have faced here in in, in the service industry recently um there is the uh, Saudization, they call it Sa'wada, in some uh, areas uh, or some jobs, which I really, uh, I like that idea. And, uh, definitely, we all support that because uh, Saudi citizens or the citizens are um, the one who were uh, in the priority should be for hiring. Uh, then if there is no uh, enough or there is no capable citizen, you look for the non-citizen. But one of the things that is, uh, يعني, I'm seeing it, it's challenging in applying this, and not all the business owners uh, consider that, sometimes because it is costing, uh, is the training. Maybe if we count or ask uh, ourselves uh, how many times we exposed in a services uh, where whether the citizen or non-citizen, by having uh, an employee, he is not well trained. He does not understand even his job tasks uh, or what is the reason of why he is there other than having a salary. So training is one of the important factors in, in businesses, whether production or services. And Deming, he was stressing that many times in his philosophy. Um, um, also, break down the barriers between departments means that um, the accounting department, marketing department, sales departments, those names, they shouldn't be working uh, independently. They have to be working together. That's why even the floor design for um, the modern uh, organizations, you see all the staff, including uh, supervisors or uh, top managers, they are working on the same floor in cubic box uh, offices uh, near to their own departments, near to each other. So things are not, uh, um, let's say, uh, it is more clearer how the company is working and running in terms of the uh, marketing or the sales or the finance or the accounting. So people can be familiar with the, with the job, uh, with their job and other jobs. So they can see the big picture, how is the company running and how it can be improved and can be involved when you involve your staff and employee in all other departments, they will be familiar and also they help you in uh, stabilizing and improving your organization. Uh, he has more uh, points here to cover. Um, Put, and this is which one, one I like, put everyone to work to accomplish the transformation. Um, it, it is not just top management who do the transformation. It has to be built from all the organization. He deals with the employee as a really team worker or teamwork, not just an employee. Uh, eliminate work standards. In a way, that is not meaning you are working without standards, but uh, in a way meaning don't put the standards that limit the people from giving the best of their uh, themselves in doing the job. Uh, one of the examples when we see how Google uh, organization, which is one of the succeeded organizations, um, they didn't put standards for the um, dressing codes. They didn't put standards for to be working in the office. You can work from home. Uh, it is task oriented, more of office hours. So um, definitely this is, it could be varying between organization to another, depend on the, in their service uh, or their um, target or um, the nature of their uh, organization. But this concept can be applied anywhere. 
uh, and toler uh, you tolerate it based on, on that nature of the organization. Uh, eliminate slogans and targets for the workforce, such as zero defect. Uh, you don't focus on zero defect, on mistakes, and focus on improving your labor, improving their skills, uh, because you would expect to have mistakes happen. And those 14 points uh, um, modified and changed over the time, but their original are here, and they are not changed radically. It just um, uh, rephrased based on the time how it's been changed um, between when it was established until today. Um, continuing with Deming, Deming is taking a big portion for this uh, section. Uh, he has the deadly disease, deadly disease in the organization. Uh, those are the deadly disease uh, in any organization. Um, we can just go over them uh, quickly. The lack of uh, consistency of the purpose, uh, of a purpose of the uh, organization or the objective of the organization, uh, or their tasks or their goals, they have different goals every time, emphasizes on short-term profit, only thinking about short-term and the short-term uh, sometimes sacrificing many things uh, in terms of the labor legality and so on. Performance evaluation, uh, annual reviews. Uh, this is not how you uh, keep your employee uh, loyal, but it will be always under the pressure of the evaluation and uh, reviews. Mobility of management, that's mean Turnover is very high in the management, so there is no stability. Running a company on a visible, uh, visible figures alone, that's mean only on the numbers. Uh, you don't see what is behind the numbers, what is going on, maybe what is the situation, the surrounding, the environment cause those numbers. Uh, excessive medical costs for employee health care and the uh, cost for warranties because you are not developing from the beginning um, a well good products so you are paying on the warranties uh, so those are general um, uh, disease as i said it, it, it varies in the implementation between organization to another but it is uh, very uh, broad and it can be uh, considered when you are uh, working or establishing your own uh, business. Uh, this cycle, it is very famous until today. You see them in many training sessions where it's talking about quality, talking about uh, total quality management. Uh, they call it um, dimming cycle. They call it Sheward cycle. Okay, to 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 give or to clarify the dilemma, and please pay attention here. Uh, this is very important point. Sheward started that, but Deming he put it on the way how you see it. They call it Plan Do Chicken Act. B D C A. P stand for plan. D for do. C for check. A for act. P D C A or Deming cycle, but it is was originated from Sheward, but then Deming, he put it in the way how it can be implemented in organizations, as you can see it here. Basically, start with the plan, as we have talked earlier, uh, aim your improvement, aim for the design, and then uh, carry it out or uh, execute it, then analyze and measure and learn from your mistakes and also uh, analyze your preference, then adopt or act for changes for improvement. This is very quick fix and you can apply it at any step or process in the service uh, system. So if you are working on, um, even if you are working in a cashier or on a, who's supervising that uh, cashier service starting from when the customers uh, stop to the cashier and leave uh, he can apply that until to a complex service like a uh, um, 
Ministry of uh, Interior, like Wazarat al or um, um, in, in, in banks. That's why you can see uh, Ministry of Interior, how they developed those all uh, technological applications who were really uh, cutting the time and reducing the waste of having your services to be conducted and applied using application on your phone by just a finger pr uh, press. Um, the, the last thing about dimming is the obstacles to success. And uh, those are um, around, yes, 12 points here. And as I say, those has to be covered and read it by the students. Uh, but doesn't mean that all those points has to be here clarified because in the uh, statements are very easy to be observed and understanding. Obstacles mean awaiq to success. So what he's stating here, things can stop you from being succeeding in your business or your organization. Um, um, it is more wider than the deadly disease and uh, it is more uh, comprehensive in terms uh, how it can be applied whether in the production or uh, a service. Um, I will maybe leave that part to you before uh, we move to Juran and I will answer any question. I will give also a couple of minutes to answer any questions here uh, on the chat box uh, if you have before we moving on to uh, the last uh, scientist here, uh, Joseph Juran. Any questions? No more questions? Okay. Yes. Do, uh, to what extent does the conflict between quality factors affect the target level? The quality factors. Uh, just give me an example of a quality factors. You mean, for example, the, the design, let's say the design. Okay, um, and you have different factors. You have the design, you have uh, uh, the reliability, and you have the durability and serviceability. On those factors, you mean the conflict or several, maybe several uh, quality factors affecting the target level. Okay, um, if you are going to measure each quality factor by itself, then you have to have a level for upper and lower for each one. But if you are going to do indexing, uh, index, uh, which is like muashir, um, muashir um, bil-Arabi, um, as they say, muashir um, al-Iqtisadi, they give a number that is calculated uh, based on an algorithm collect all the factors that affect the economy in the, in the country and then give you that index. That index, which is representing the uh, economy uh, uh, the economy in the country. The same here in the quality. If you are looking for all those factors to be indexed, uh, then you have to collect all those factors and design of experiment, DOE, will help you to find the index where is you can say this is the quality level of that product considering all the factors but if you are monitoring those factors then you have to break them down piece by piece and draw the upper and the lower for each factor and monitor it by itself independently okay so if you are looking for the general quality level, you have to do index that collect all those factors mathematically and have muashir wahid or one index and number give you, let's say, how is it performing. It's like when you see a movie rating, okay? From those well-known names, websites, uh, let's say, 
that is uh, specialized in rating movies, they give you a rate out of five or out of 10, based on the story, based on the script, based on the picture and the, on, on all of that. Those we consider it as a quality factors for the users or for the consumers who's watching the movies from specialists who knows those are the factors. And then they have a way how to calculate it and give you those out of 10. I'm just giving a simple example to understand the big one from products and complex systems. Hope that answer your questions. Okay. So um, let's end here by Juran. Joseph Juran is the one who was um, basically one of the persons who established that union of uh, Japanese uh, scientists and engineers, the link I sent you earlier. Juran philosophy is relying on the three things that is close to the one that we have covered about managing the quality, planning, control, and improvement. Uh, these are the integrated together in, in the organization to be applied. There are more other scientists like Ishikawa. Ishikawa, a uh, uh, Japanese scientist. Also, when you see the website that I sent you, you will see his name on the right page, on the right side of the page. Uh, uh, Armand uh, Figenham, uh, also one of the author uh, in quality. Uh, there is Crosby, also uh, one of the scientists in quality. Those, what is maybe the question from students that I'm expecting is, what is required from us? You have to know each one, what he was famous on, what he was uh, uh, philosophy based on, from the textbook here or the slides here, uh, nothing from outside, so you have to read them. Why? Understanding their philosophy will open uh, your uh, mind uh, broadly about what is the quality meaning and you see how the quality is very broad. And it, that's one of the things also, again, it cannot be defined in, in just only one statement because it's a big philosophy, big methods that underneath the quality. We will stop until this slide and inshallah we will continue with the TQM, Total Quality Management, which is basically um, based from Deming and Joran. Maybe you hear TQM a lot in the training uh, uh, institutes and uh, actually it was based from the philosophy of Deming and Joran philosophy. Inshallah, we'll start it um, and we will have it only in summary. We'll not go in depth because total quality management, it has a course itself called quality management. That is elective course. So we'll just go briefly here and inshallah, we'll continue that on Wednesday. Please, if you have any questions, ask and we can use this time for answering the questions. And for those students who doesn't have, uh, you are free to go because the session is uh, end. We'll see you, inshallah, on next Wednesday. Um, I'm still going to be here to answer any questions.